Well, hello everyone. I am coming to you today from Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Pikes Peak Marathon. I just arrived into town. I'm gonna go and take a look and see who's around. This is my second year attending this event. Last year we covered it for the Golden Trail series. Uh, Solomon's back here again. They brought me out again. So we have the ascent tomorrow and then the marathon itself is on Sunday. It's gonna be an exciting year. Killian is in town. He's supposedly going for Matt Carpenter's impossible record of 316. That's for a marathon up to 14,000 feet and back down with like almost 8,000 feet of climbing. So pretty impressive stuff. Anyways, we're gonna go uh, take a look at the expo here. It's gonna be a busy weekend. Pikes Peak Ascent Marathon weekend and we're gonna be chasing some records here. Mod Mathis, I believe is chasing Megan Kimmel's record and then Killian Jornet is chasing Matt Carpenter's record. So it'll be exciting. And then a lot of other good athletes in, in there that can potentially be there. Okay, so I think I misspoke earlier. I'm actually in Manitou Springs, not Colorado Springs. This is just actually where the race starts and finishes. So I went around the expo and didn't really see many people. So I'm heading over to the Solomon House. Can't get a hold of anyone. I don't, just don't know if they're ignoring my calls, but um, it should be just within a walking distance here. Hopefully I can find some people, find out what exactly I'm gonna be doing this weekend and connect up with these ladies and gents. Oh, I can see the incline from here. It's right up there. Okay, I've had no luck finding anyone at any supposed Solomon houses, so I did get word that there's a how-to trail run demo seminar going on here in about a half hour up at Bar Camp Trail Head. So I'm gonna go and change into my running clothes, see if I can't jump in and uh, participate in that. Okay, finally found everyone. We're out doing a trail, how to trail run workshop with Solomon here at the Bar Camp Trailhead. There's quite a few people here, which is great. I'm just getting suited up. And uh, we're gonna go on a little run. Hopefully we don't get rained on too bad. Uh, I'm Max King. Uh, a lot of you guys I already know, which is cool. Um, but these how to trail run workshops have been um, really cool. We've done a lot of them um, just around the country. I've done a couple of them in Bend um, for our local retailer in Bend. Um, and just kind of connecting to like just the participants that want a little bit more information. There's a lot of people coming over from road running um, that want to just like, just some information about how to run on a trail. And it's been really helpful to have this as a tool to be able to kind of introduce trail running to them. Um, and so we've put a ton of people through it and it's been like, it's, it's been huge. It's been awesome to be able to, to use this and stuff. So um, looking forward to doing it for you guys tonight. <laughs> Um, one of the things um, we like to teach is when you're running uphill, think about how far we have to go on a trail. It's not like the roads where you're running up a 100, 200 foot hill and you can power up it and then you get back to the flats and you can take off again. Oftentimes with trail running, you're going to be running uphill for a long time. Um, and so finding that sustainable pace and that sustainable effort is really important with trail running. Um, and so taking nice short steps slowing down, slowing yourself down a little bit and making sure that you can just sustain that pace is really important. Um, this morning we were, we ran up at about 12,000 feet out bar trail this morning. And, um, I was just, I was running behind Mark Blauenstein, who's a Swiss runner. Um, and he was going very slow and it just impressed upon me, like how slow you have to go to make it sustainable 
in a different environment. So not a super steep trail, but just short, very efficient strides. I'm not gonna take it fast. We're not trying to like power up the climb because I might have like 12 more miles to go. So just nice short strides. You're kind of staying on your toes, working with the trail and being very efficient. So power hiking is um, easier to teach in Europe than it is in the U.S. Uh, because it really comes into play when things are steeper than what we have. Like for us right now, if you're too tired at altitude, it's kind of easy to just do our natural walk hike in Colorado style. So we kind of like want to pretend like we just kind of want to exaggerate maybe what we're doing here. And this would be maybe a better example. But the whole idea with running and life in general is always to keep ourselves as light as can be. Right? When it's not steep like this one, you can land on your heel and make very big steps. Yeah. And you will have exactly the same speed than someone who runs. at bar camp, which is much more substantial than I ever could imagine. I want to live here. We're about, what, seven and a half miles into the race. Yeah, it's a lovely morning. Explain to us what Sage dumped on his head there at the end. Well, I'm sure he thought it was water, but it ended up being pickle juice. Right there. Frank. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. Yeah, I keep running. Sorry, Sage. <laughs> Good job, Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. 